you click this button you will reset the settings to default you can have multiple settings for multiple things so like coaching casting whatever next up we have screen settings you can hide the minimap you can turn it sideways you can also put it on the right or on the left then the same for stats, so you can hide the stats, so we have the minimap. You can have multiple row, you can demonstrate it like this. So if the stats don't fit on your screen, this option will allow multiple rows. We can change the font size, so you can change this depending on how big your screen is. And then we can also change how big we want that box to be then next up are the general settings and this is the language you can change it to all the supported languages so by clicking this you can change to a preset of themes but you can also make a custom theme by clicking this uh, pen icon or just going to the custom here and uh, you can just change what, uh, the team to whatever this might lag a little bit depending on what's going on on your screen but you can see it change in real time the best is to click and not like drag it because I never like so this is the background in the blue this is the second background so for the other things then this is the accent color for like other text is like kind of obvious. This is also like uh, on the minimum and the boost color, so that's like the accent color for the text and the boost on the map. This should be like a really easy to see color, so maybe some flashy green. Um, and we can also change the team colors, not like each team, but um, this will also change depending on what team colors in game. So you should really have to touch these. Uh, let's reset this to default. Button. And then you can also change the speed to miles per hour or the default in kilometers per hour. So you'll see this just change. Uh, depending on uh, what you select here. And next up is minimap. Wait for simplicity, we'll change the minimap to be right side. I will change this like that. Okay, so first we'll take a look at the boost path visibility. So if we put it always, all the paths will always show. If we put it in color mode, we'll see all paths change color depending on who picked it up. So you see here the boost is not available because blue took it. This is uh, useful to see like who has boost control. And dynamic will just remove the paths that are not available for pickup. And you see them disappear. And then you can also just disable them. You can also have height indicators. So depending on how high players go in the air, their right will get smaller. Same for the ball. You see the ball is very high here, so it's really small and it comes down. This player flies up. And we can also do the same but with color, so their color will get way darker the higher it is. So you see the ball gets darker there. It's kind of useful if you just enable both of them, then you have like a really good visibility of them. See these players are high, it's darker and smaller. And then we can enable team color accents, this is like the goals. Kind of useful to leave this on. You can also disable the midfield line if you just want some cleaner looking map. Uh, third field lines are these lines. It's kind of useful to see like this is a third of the map, this is another third and this is the other third. And you can also decide to hide the brain is. Make it a little easier to just follow what the team does. You can also visualize the boost map. And then next up we can also um, hide the direction the player is facing if you just want a little cleaner map as well. Might not be needed to see where they're going. And you can also enable the ball speed. 
can be useful to see how fast it's traveling. Um, next up is the replay, so you can hide this as well. Make this clean or have like full information. This will always show in replays, but if you're watching a live game, it will show during like replay sections of that. Then we can enable or like change the player trail, so that's like behind the player. This will like, as you can see, light in the boost color when they're boosting in that moment. Like you can see where people boost. So you can like change how much like history it needs to remember or like show you. Like you can leave us at like five or something. And then how much rotation you want to visualize because it's really easy to see how they move around. Also like the distance between each dot will like indicate how fast they were. So the faster they go the more space will between uh between uh if someone is going very slow, you'll see it's like very stuck. We'll put this back here. Then you can do the same with ball, but by default it's off. Because you don't really need to see the rotation of the ball, but it can be useful. You can see, I like, can also see the ball speed based on that. We'll it though. Then you can also change the size of the player names in case you like are far away or you need to like see it way better. Or you can just make it really small depending on how close you are to your screen. Next up is like the size of the layers. It's best to try to match this like how big they are in game. Like this well this makes no sense but it's whatever. <laughs> Might be easier to like see though in certain situations. And you can do the same do the same with the ball. Makes it easier to follow it. And then you can do the same with the pad size. Uh, then to visualize rotations, you can enable the lines between the players. So now it enabled the blue team. You can also do the same with orange. We're only orange. You can really nicely see how players are moving. And then we can do the same for the, the coverage. So like this will draw lines between their goal and um, ball so you can see if they're actually like covering their net like team wise or play wise like if the last minute is between the lines or not then we'll move to the next category or then i'll just change the screen again let's just go back to default uh, so now we got the team then we can enable the game timer the game score in case you don't want to see that you can also hide the names this team will be the top side of the screen and this team will be the bottom side and then um, we can also decide to change the stat name horizontal instead of vertical in case you want to have it easier to read you can also hide the stats in case you like want to hide this bar you just disable them all I like to have a clean overview by clicking these stats you can choose which ones to show this one, the bottom ones will all like show total amount during the game and the boost and speed ones will be in real time like the sum of the speeds or the sum of the boosts. It can be useful to see which team has more boost at the moment or which team is driving faster. And then like the other ones are just general statistics of like who's using more boosts, who has more ball possession, stuff like that. And you can also choose to change the order of these, so if you just lower this one, you'll see it move to the left. If you make it higher, it will go to the right. You can also just type numbers in here to like change the order instead of using these. So you can like you put like 100 here, oh. and like minus 100 in this one to make sure it's always on the left, stuff like that. Doesn't really matter what you put there, it's just the order. And now we'll go to players. You can choose to hide players. This will hide their stats here in case you only want to like watch for example Nolly. We'll just do that for now. And you can hide the boost meter, speed meter. You can also enable throttle this is how much they are holding down the gas. 
Oh, they will also like if they reverse, then they will go past this line. You see, it's almost like full way. It's kind of useful to see at times. Uh, same for as before for the stats. You can disable them. You can enable them. As mentioned previously, you can enable the multi-throw in case you have too many stats. Then you can just like, enable all these for the like, information what all these stats do. You can just like over your mouse over it and it will just explain it. Same for here usually. Yeah. You can just like same for the team stats. Okay, now we go to the next, and this is the advanced tab, you can also enable the observer number, this will show the number you need to press, uh, like in live games, to like observe this player, so it's useful for like observer and producers, and you can also see the ping, this can also be useful in like live games to see if some player disconnected or not, it's like a button on this ping, that the one is the keybind, or you can just have only ping or only keybind. Um, and you can also hide this notification here if you don't like it, but this just shows how many games there are in your game history. You can just disable that. You can also disable the drawing tool if you if it's lagging too much, then you can just hide it and it will improve performance a little bit. And then we move to a remote connection. This is if you want to connect to uh, someone else's Rocket League, so you will have the same uh, game bit. Data. So, for example, if you're not allowed into the lobby, you can just connect to the guy that's actually in the lobby and like watch it through that. 